Hey, what's up? My name is Ari and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Facebook.com, AKA Meta Mark. And in this one, we're going to talk about Figma auto layouts. It's basically a bunch of tools within Figma that allow you to create dynamic designs via creating dynamic components and frames that automatically arrange themselves, grow and shrink. And I think it's easier if I just showed you how they work. All right, let's go ahead and start simple. First, I'm going to create three different text items over here. So I'm going to create home. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to create about, and then I'm going to create contact. There are three different ways in order to create auto layouts. First, you can select all the items that you want to include inside an auto layout and come up here where it says auto layout, press the plus button and you have yourself the auto layout. The interface changes to represent that. I'm going to press command Z and I'm going to select all my items again. Another way is to just press shift and A on your keyboard. So shift A also creates an auto layout. And the very last way is to right click and just come down here where it says add auto layout. Great. Another note is that if you have your items stacked next to each other horizontally and you create an auto layout, then it'll create a horizontal auto layout. But if I was to do this vertically, so home, and let's just say that I wanted to make an auto layout out of these, then that creates a vertical auto layout. However, you could change the direction with ease by clicking this button over here, which changes the direction of your auto layout. In order to remove the auto layout, you simply select the item, you come over here and either press this minus button and that removes the auto layout and changes it back into a normal frame. Or you could right click and just go remove auto layout, or you could just press option shift and A and that does the exact same thing. The next item on the interface is the spacing between items. That basically does what it says. It increases or decreases the amount of spacing that you have between each auto layout item. I'm going to keep this at 48 and let's move on. The next piece is our padding around our auto layout. I'm going to go ahead and add a fill in order to make it easier to see what happens with the padding. And I'm going to change the color of my fill to 1B2431. And I'm going to change my text color to white. This padding is the amount of spacing that I have around my items. Just keep in mind that this entire frame inside an auto layout counts as one item. So if I go ahead and increase this to 32, for example, you could see how I have an equal amount of spacing of 32 around all of my items while they still keep their 48 pixels of the space between items attribute. The next thing that I want to go through is the alignment and padding that allows you to do a few different things over here. One of them is that it allows you to control the padding individually. So let's say that I wanted 24 padding on top and bottom, 32 on left and right. I could simply do that. This is the alignment tool. We'll come back to this in just a second. And the very last item is the space between or packed, which I'll come back to in just a second of how that works as well. I'm going to go ahead and remove both my padding, turn it back into zero and remove the fill. I'm going to change the color of my text to 1B2431. And the last thing that I'm going to do is to rename this to menu. Another application that other layouts are really useful in is to create dynamic buttons. So let's create a button. I'm going to give it the attribute of 14 pixels in font size, leave 24 for height, come down here, make it uppercase and make it extra bold. Then I'm going to make an auto layout out of this by just pressing shift A on my keyboard, rename it to a button. I'm going to give it a custom padding of six on top, 16 right, six bottom, 16 left. And in terms of alignment, I want my button to always be within the center over here. I'll show you why that matters. But before I do that, let me go ahead and give this button a background color and a stroke color. I can simply give this button a stroke by pressing the plus on my stroke then come down here and use a color that I've used before, which is this 1B color. And then I'm also going to give it a fill color, which is the background color. And that's going to be 7F6CFD. I'm going to change my text color to white and I'm going to give my button a four pixel border radius. What's cool about all the layout is that my button is now dynamic because of this attribute over here that says hug content. So if I was to go ahead and change this to sign in, you can see that my button just grows as I type. I'm going to change it to sign up and let me show you guys something over here. If I go ahead and manually resize my button, you could see the attribute change from hug content to fix. So if I change it back to hug content, it's going to account for the padding that I have around my button, which is 16, 6 and 16. And it's going to leave that gap around the item that I have the other layout around and the button will grow accordingly to that longer 
button. But there are times where you want a specific width on your buttons or your elements, and you could either change this manually to fixed, but if you start manually resizing your button, the attribute changes to fixed on its own. But what if you wanted your text to align to the center or to the right? Well, that's quite easy. You could simply do that by moving it to the center or to the right. But if I go ahead and change the height of my button, you can see that my button is at the top right, and that's why the alignment tool is good for it. So you could basically control exactly where your item ends up. So you could put it at the top center, center of the entire thing, bottom center, bottom right, whatever. For the purpose of my button, however, I want both the height and the width to be on the hug content. And next, we're going to duplicate this button and I'm going to create a login button. I'm going to change the background of my login to E8, 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 and I'm going to use the same black as what I was using before. I'm going to increase the size of my border radius to two pixels as well. Then I'm going to create a new auto layout out of these two guys. And I'm going to rename this to buttons. And I'm going to change the spacing between them to 16 pixels of spacing. I'm going to place them next to these guys, select both of my frames that are auto layouts and press shift A on my keyboard, make an auto layout out of these guys. And we almost have a menu. All I'm going to do is to just give it a fill, make sure the fill is white, give this fill a padding of 16 top, 32 right, 16 bottom, 32 left like this. And the 16 calculates from the largest item that you have within your auto layout. So for example, the largest item I have are these two buttons. So the 16 and the 32 is from this, where from my text, it's actually 16, 28, 32. Let's go ahead and call this our nav and let's play around with these items a little bit. I want a couple of things to happen over here. I want to create a responsive nav. So when I resize this, I want every item within here to get resized as well. I want everything to be center aligned to each other. And both of those things are quite easy to do. In order to do that, I'm just going to come over here quickly, open up my alignment and padding tool and make sure everything is center aligned right in the center. So if I go ahead and increase this, you can see my items stay in the center and they're center aligned to each other. And all of that math happens automatically. I don't necessarily have to worry about manually doing anything. The next thing is to create a responsive nav where my items are always 32 pixels from the right and 32 pixels from the left. And this gap in the middle, I don't really care about how large that is as long as these two items stick to the left and the right. And in order to do that, that's quite simple. Let's go ahead and grow this to 960 pixels. Let's come back down here and play around with this. At the moment, it's unpacked. Packed basically means place these items together and let me control their spacings. Meaning that if I go ahead and mess around with the spacing over here, it allows me to increase or decrease the spacing between them. But as I said, I don't really care about that. I want this to be responsive, so I don't have to worry about defining what space it needs. So I'm just going to go down to the drop down, press on space between, and that basically pushes my items further apart and it keeps them true to the padding that I provided before. So if I go to my items, my right item is 32 pixels from the right and my left item is 32 pixels from the left. And this will always stay true if I just go ahead and resize my navigation over here you would always get the exact same thing. The last item that I want to add over here is to showcase some edge cases. So let's go ahead and add another menu item and call this one. I'm going to create a circle, which is 16 by 16, and it has a hex value of EC7171. Let's say every time I get a notification, I want this red dot to appear on the top. How do I drop this within my auto layout in a way that this will get placed on top of the notifications panel over here? Because at the moment, if I try to drop this in anywhere, you could see there is a blue line indicating where it's going to get dropped, but it's fairly restricted. It just allows you to drop this inside the auto layouts that are already existing. But in order to basically pull this up and chuck it on top of this, I could simply click and drag it up, hold down the space bar on my keyboard and drag it on top. You can see that this now overrides the default behavior of all the layouts. And I could just simply just dump it over here. I could even adjust it with my arrow keys like this and drop it wherever that I want to drop this guy. So I just wanted to leave you guys with that. Now let's go ahead and take everything we just learned and create something a little bit more complex. In order to save time, I already have all the items that I'm going to be using in this exercise over here. I'm going to quickly create a universal feedback banner that you see on almost every single app or website. In order to do that, we're going to need this banner title. We're going to need a paragraph, these two buttons, and this 24 by 24 icon. The final result will look something like this. It's this 
responsive banner that I could just basically place anywhere. I could type anything, doesn't really matter how long. It's just gonna grow or shrink as it needs to. And it's really, really flexible in terms of all the different states that I could provide for it. So in order to create something like this, you need to think strategically around how you're going to place your other layouts because you're going to mix and match a whole bunch of other layouts together in order to achieve something like this. For me, I could see that I have this item at the top. I have this item at the bottom. These two are really dependent on each other in terms of how they resize themselves. So I can simply come over here and create an other layout out of these two guys. I'm going to call this text and the next thing that i want to do is to adjust the spacing that they have between them so i want the spacing to be at eight pixels and the next thing that i want to include within this other layout is a relationship between this icon and this text i could either do this between the text and the buttons or the text on the icon i'm going to choose to do it between text and the icon so i'm going to create another other layout by pressing shift a and i'm going to rename this to top i'm going to adjust the spacing between my icon and this to 16 pixels and the next step is to create a group out of these two buttons so shift a on these two i'm gonna change this to buttons and i'm gonna change the space into 16 between the two of them and i'm going to place this at the bottom of my top section i'm gonna create an auto layout out of these guys and i'm gonna come over here and make sure that everything's aligned to the right and that's just going to drop my buttons to the right. And the space between the top and the bottom is going to be 24 pixels. And the last bit is to add a fill to drop a background color. Change the name to feedback banner and start adding a padding around the whole thing. And I wanted to give it a 16 pixels padding equally all around. Change the border radius to four pixels and we're almost there. We just need to add a drop shadow. The color of my drop shadow, I'm just gonna go to effects, add a drop shadow, come over here. It's four blur, four from the Y value. I'm just gonna change the opacity to 10%. And now we have ourselves this banner. However, it's not yet responsive. So if I was to increase the size or decrease the size, you can see it doesn't really do what I want it to do. So I need to work my way from either outside to inside or inside to outside, because as you add all of these other layouts to these items, their resizing values changes and you just need to be careful about that. So from the outside in, the resizing value, I want it to be fixed. So that allows me to basically resize this guy at this point. The height can be on hug content because I just wanted to automatically wrap around my items. Then I'm going to select my buttons. My buttons are hug content and that's fine. I'm going to leave them as that because I want to be able to be flexible around where I place them in relation to the top section. And then I'm going to grab the top section. I don't want this to be hug content. I want this to be responsive. And that's where we have this thing called a fill container. So the fill container basically grabs this internal boundary and pushes it to the external boundaries according to the padding. So by that, what I mean is this blue box over here at the moment, it's meant to be 16 pixels from all sides. And when I come over here and select fill container, you could see that it does that automatically. However, that doesn't necessarily happen with my text because I need to go inside and do the same thing for the text box. So fill container there, and I need to do this for these items as well. So that's on fixed that needs to be fill this also needs to go on fill and now everything fills the container and just like this i just created a fully responsive feedback banner the icon needs to be on fixed and fixed in order to reserve its sizing as you grow or shrink this banner over here and as usual that's it for this one don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and candy content like this and i'll see you guys in the next one